<coughs> okay, so chapter 6 um, On uh, today's uh, lecture We are going to look at The different type of uh, Circulatory system Okay, so we are going to look at For animals that have uh, Simple body plans So they have no circulatory system So they will depend on <coughs> Astrovascular cavity to uh, distribute respiratory gas and also nutrients throughout the body. And as for the more complex uh, organism, okay, so because they have larger body size, they are more active, uh, <clears throat> they have um, uh, uh, high needs of uh, metabolic uh, activity, uh, uh, high needs, high, high metabolic rates, okay, to provide energy throughout body. They have uh, more organs, body organs, so they have <coughs> um, an efficient okay circulatory system so it can be divided into <clears throat> two types which is open uh, circulatory system and also closed circulatory system so for <clears throat> uh, for much more simple um, for organism for smaller size uh, organism okay so smaller size organism organism that is <clears throat> not so active so uh, they have um, open circulatory system. Okay, so for organism that have that uh, that requires much more um, oxygen needs, much more nutrients. Uh, so they have they have closed circulatory circulatory system. Okay, so um, we are going to look at uh, in detail for each type. Okay, for gastrovascular cavity, <coughs> uh, open circulatory system, and also. Um, Closed circulatory system. Okay, so so no specialized circulatory system. So for these uh, for, are for uh, organism that has simple body plan. Okay, so for example, as <coughs> sponges, cnidarians, uh, thanophores, okay, uh, flatworms, and also nematodes. Okay, <coughs> so cnidarians um, is the organism that has central uh, gastrovascular cavity. Uh, which is uh, it function as both in the circulatory system and also digestive system it function as both uh, circulatory organ and also digestive organs <clears throat> same goes to all the uh, other organism they have flatworms have uh, gastrovascular cavity sponges have uh, gastrovascular cavities thanophores uh, have um, a gastrovascular uh, cavities same as goes to the nematodes okay <clears throat> Nematodes too. Um, examples are, for, are worms, okay, but there are also worms that has um, closed circulatory system. So it depends on the types of organism. <clears throat> and then, um, then of course, they are like jellyfish. Tapi the Nigerians, uh, uh, then of course, are, are, are jellyfish that are examples are jellyfish. But for this or organism, the movement is uh, depend on the movement of cilia. Okay, kalau nidarians, uh, examples are uh, jellyfish, corals, okay, hydra, those are examples of nidarians. <coughs> so, uh, for this organism, um, for, for flatworms, okay, the name go, uh, uh, implies or it describes the, the body of that uh, worms, they have flattened body, okay. So, they will depend on the gastrovascular cavity for effective gas exchange by diffusion okay so because the body plan is flat okay so <clears throat> it is enough for this organism organism just to depend on gastrovascular cavity to distribute um respiratory gas and also to distribute nu nutrients throughout the body so fluid in the body cavity <clears throat> uh, of the nematodes circulates materials okay so materials including nutrients and also respiratory gases so this is uh, an example of hydra. Okay, so hydra, as you can see here in the diagram, so the body plan is really simple. So they have two layers of uh, cells, the inner layer of cells and the outer layer of cells. So this is the gastrovascular cavity, and they only have one opening. So this is where uh, this is uh, where the food enters. Okay, and also where the 
waste will be released and they have tentacles here okay to catch uh, their prey okay <clears throat> So, um, so the red arrows indicate uh, the path for nutrient circulation throughout the gastrovascular cavity. Okay, so, so as uh, as the food enters through the mouth, okay, through the tentacles here, the tentacles uh, will catch the the prey, okay, and then uh, shove into the mouth, okay, and then will be digested <coughs> uh, in the body cavity. So, enzyme will be released, okay, into the uh, into this cavity, gastrovascular cavity, and digest the nutrients. And the contraction of the body uh, will distribute the nutrients and also gases throughout the body. So the nutrients can easily pass through the, the inner cell layer and also the outer cell layer. So they will <coughs> the process will just depend on a uh, simple diffusion process. Okay. So it says here in Hydra and other Nigerians, nutrients circulate throughout the gastrovascular cavity and come in contact with the inner layer of the body cells. So the, the yellow cell here is the inner layer uh, body cells. Nutrient dis, uh, diffuse in short distance to the outer layer of the cell. So this is the outer layer. So they will uh, they can easily depend on the process of diffusion. Okay. Circulation in hydra is aided by contraction of muscles of the body wall and this distribute nutrient to all body part okay so this is the gastrovascular cavity that function in both circulatory system to circulate respiratory gas and also uh, digestive system to distribute nutrients throughout the body <coughs> okay so uh, next you have the flatworms or planaria uh, flatworms okay so here you can see this branch structure here is the gastrovascular cavity. Okay, so they have branched gastrovascular cavity that allows nutrient to uh, come uh, within close proximity to almost, so to most body cells. Okay, to most body cells. So this is the eyes of the flatworms. They have the firings and also this is the mouth. All right. So the flat body uh, optimizes the diffusional exchange by increasing surface area and minimizing diffusion distance. Okay. So they have branched uh, gastrovascular cavity so that uh, all the nutrients, all the respiratory gases uh, will reach every cells within the uh, body. Okay, so this is flatworms. <clears throat> okay, so increase surface area, minimizing diffusion uh, distance. Okay, so uh, senang je. Kalau, uh, apa, kalau dia ada flat body surface, flat, flat, uh, uh, flat body structure so the the, the distance for the uh, exchange of respiratory gas can occur easily okay so those are for organism that uh, that has no circulatory system so they will depend on gastrovascular cavity as for the organism that is much more complex they requires much more nutrient, much more oxygen to provide for cellular respiration to generate more energy to provide <coughs> uh, uh, energy for their daily life. Okay, uh, so uh, for this organism, they can uh, they can either have open circulatory system or closed circulatory system. It okay, depends on the organism. Much more smaller organism <coughs> depends on open circulatory system, such as for example, um, grasshoppers. Okay. Mollusk, mollusk tu siput lah, okay. Closed circulatory system such as for uh, animals, okay, mammals, uh, birds, humans. So we depend on circulatory, closed circulatory system, okay. So for organisms that have open circulatory system such as arthropods, okay, arthropods such as grasshoppers, can okay? grasshoppers, um, insects lah, alright. And mollusk, most mollusk, uh, mollusk tu siput, okay. Um, Clams, okay, uh, so those are examples of mollusk. Uh, they have a heart that pumps blood in, into vessels with open ends, okay, open ends. So blood and interstitial fluid makes up hemolymph, which fill large sinuses. So these large sinuses, we call it as hemocyl, okay, hemocyl. So when the, uh, when the heart pumps blood into open and blood vessels so the blood will get mixed with interstitial fluid that we call it as the hemolymph okay 
Maksudnya hemolif ni ada, adalah combination darah dengan interstitial fluid that is found in the uh, body uh, body cavity which which we call it as hemosil. Okay, so the lower hydrostatic pressure associated so less costly in terms of energy uh, expenditure. So they uh, uh, so for this organism uh, the they require much less energy. Okay, uh, so body body movement helps circulate the hemolymph uh, so that uh, they enter back into the uh, into the blood vessels and back to the heart. So as you can see here, you have uh, the mollusk, such as for example what clams. Okay, and then this is the arthropod such as uh, grasshoppers. So as you can see from this uh, structure of clams, can kind of clam. Okay mollusk and arthropods. Okay, so they have heart uh, pumps the blood into artery that end in sinuses. Sinuses is body cavity. Okay, so for this organism, the body cavity, we call it as the hemocyl. Okay, hemocyl is cavity, hemocyl. But body cavity that is filled with hemolymph. Okay, so hemolymph is the, is the combination between blood and also interstitial fluid. Okay, that circulate within the hemocyl. Okay, so this is the, for example, within this clam, within this mollusk, uh, they have the heart. So the heart, the heart, you have the um, atrium, you have the ventricle. So the ventricle pumps the blood into open and blood capi, uh, blood vessels. Okay, so open and blood vessels. So the blood uh, will enter into body cavity, which is hemocyl, get mixed with the interstitial fluid. So within this region, yang warna, uh, uh, warna kuning ni, so you have uh, the hemo, uh, hemolymph that is the mixture of blood and also interstitial fluid. <coughs> so, uh, so then uh, the blood will enter back into the it, into these uh, blood uh, vessels and gets um, and and goes to the gills, okay, to be uh, to to uh, to remove carbon dioxide and to uh, reload with oxygen and back to the uh, and back to heart uh, and back to the heart. Okay, uh, so this is the flow lah. So the heart will then pump uh, the oxygen rich blood back to the open and uh, blood vessels and uh, and distributed uh, the oxygen and the nutrients uh, to throughout uh, the body cells in the uh, hemocyl okay so the same goes to the grasshopper so for the grasshopper they have tubular hearts okay tubular hearts which is uh, a series of heart okay so uh, ostia is opening of the heart okay so Tubular heart will pumps blood into uh, open end uh, artery. So, so the the uh, the oxygen rich blood enters into the artery, uh, and then into the body cavity, which is the hemocyl. Get get mixed uh, with the interstitial fluid. So, within the body cavity, you have the uh, hemo hemolymph. Okay, hemolymph, and then uh, distribute uh, all the gas, uh, all the oxygen, all the nutrients throughout all the, throughout the body and enters back into the uh, into the heart through the ostia. Okay, ostia is opening of the uh, tubular heart where the where the uh, where the blood will enter back into the heart. Okay. So in arthropods, a tubular heart pumps hemolymph into arteries that delivers it to the sinuses. Okay, sinuses is body cavity of the hemocyl. After circulating, hemo, uh, hemolymph re-enters the heart through ostia in the heart wall. Okay, ostia is um, opening of the heart. Okay. So, uh, same goes to the molas. Okay, as, uh, as uh, I've explained, in, uh, in most molas, the heart pumps hemolymph into blood vessels that conduct into the hemocyl. Hemocyl is body cavity. Okay, after bathing the, the cells, the hemolymph enters the vessels that conduct into the gills. Okay, enter into these vessels and uh, into the gills. So, the hemolymph is recharged with oxygen and then returned to to the heart, okay, to back to the heart. So those, uh, so these are open uh, circulatory system or organism with open circulatory system. Okay, blood gets mixed with the uh, hemo, uh, with the interstitial fluid to, to become hemolymph. As for the organism with closed circulatory system, so 
uh, the blood will never mix with the interstitial fluid. Okay, because the blood is confined within the blood vessels. Okay, so for closed circulatory system, it is a circulatory system in which blood, which is the circulating fluid, is confined to vessels and is distinct from the interstitial fluid. Okay, so the blood will not be mixed with the interstitial fluid. So gases, nutrients and waste this uh, diffuse between blood in the vessels and interstitial fluid that breathe the, cell, the cells through the thin wall of capillary. So, daripada, uh, daripada apa nama? Uh, blood, sorry, the, the heart pumps the blood into arteries and then arteries into arterioles, into um, into blood capillaries within body tissues. So, the blood capillary, within the blood capillaries, gases uh, will be exchanged, okay? Nutrients will be... Uh, will uh, will uh, be distributed to body cells okay and then waste will be diffused into blood capillaries okay and then back uh, into vessels uh, which is venules and then vein, vein and then back into uh, into the heart so example of organism with closed circulatory system uh, are uh, invertebrates okay invertebrates such as annelids annelids are earthworms okay so earthworm although you, you see earthworm uh, they have uh, like a simple body plan, but actually they have closed circulatory system. Uh, and then you have cephalopods, okay? So examples are squids and octopus, okay? So octopus and squid actually have closed circulatory system. And obviously all vertebrates, uh, including humans, we have closed circulatory system, okay? So, so as you can see, so this is the heart. So the heart pumps the blood into continuous blood vessels okay so you have the vein you have the blood capillaries within body tissues of organs and then uh, back into the uh, into uh, blood vessels which is uh, venules and then vein and then back to the heart okay so what is the benefit of having closed circulatory system so ben the benefit of uh, having closed circulatory system is to generate high blood pressure Okay, so this uh, enables the effective delivery of oxygen and nutrients to cells of larger and more active animals. Okay, kalau kita nak comparekan dengan open circulatory system, macam clams kan, clam berbanding dengan tikus. Contohnya, mana yang lebih aktif? Okay, uh, fish lah, kita tak payah lah macam tikus. Dua-dua uh, aquatic organism, so clams and uh, fish. Okay, so which one requires much more energy? obviously the fish okay compared to clam so clam will have uh, open circulatory system they don't have to generate high blood pressure because the uh, the, the structure of the body is really simple they don't have as much uh, organ as the fish for example so they they can depend uh, easily on the open circulatory circulatory system but uh, as for the more complex organism that requires much more oxygen, much more nutrients, so by having a closed circulatory system, uh, when the blood is confined within the blood vessels, so this is to make sure that the blood uh, will, will uh, supply uh, nutrients and oxygen throughout the body uh, through the high blood pressure generated by the pumping of the heart, okay? So uh, this is to ensure efficient regulation of uh, distribution of blood throughout the uh, body, throughout uh, the organs within the uh, body, okay? Okay, so now we are going to look at the two different types of uh, closed circulatory system, which we have the single uh, circulation and double circulation. Okay, so what is the difference between single and double circulation? Single circulation is when the heart pumps the blood once throughout the body, okay? But as for the double circulation, the heart pumps the blood twice. So once through, uh, once to the pulmonary circuit or the pulmocutaneous circuit in the, uh, in, uh, in amphib amphibian, for example, and then back to the heart so that the, the heart can repressurize the blood so that the blood can pump oxygen-rich blood throughout the body through the systemic circuit. So double circulation, they have two circuit. The one that goes to the lung, okay, and the one that goes to the uh, all body, 
uh, organs within the within the body through the systemic circuit. So we have pulmonary circuit and uh, systemic circuit for double circulation. So first for the double circulation, sorry, for the single circulation or organism with single circulation, we have fish. Okay, so for fish, uh, they have two chambers of heart, heart uh, sorry, two chambers of the heart, which is uh, one atrium and one ventricle. Okay, so this atrium will receive oxygen poor blood coming from the uh, uh, coming from the body organs. Okay, huh? so so uh, you have blood capillaries. Okay, blood capillaries uh, where uh, you you find the blood capillaries within uh, body organs within the fish. So uh, the blood uh, returning back to the heart. So the uh, you have oxygen poor poor blood. So this oxygen poor blood enters into the atrium and into the ventricle. So the ventricle pumps the oxygen poor blood to the gills. Okay, so when the blood reaches the uh, blood capillaries uh, within the gills, so gaseous exchange will occur. Okay, so carbon dioxide diffuse out, oxygen diffuse in. Okay, so oxygen diffuse in into the blood, so the, uh, the blood will become oxygen rich blood. Okay, so oxygen rich blood will, uh, will enter into uh, uh, blood vessels that distribute oxygen rich blood to all other parts of the body. Okay, so kalau tengok kat sini, kalau uh, for fish, obviously when the when the heart pumps the blood into blood capillaries within the gills, obviously the blood pressure will be reduced because as you can see, the 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 uh, you have many branches of blood capillaries okay within the gills, so this will lower the blood pressure. Okay, this will lower with the blood pressure that enters into this, um, into the systemic circulation. Okay, into the systemic circulation. So, uh, the movement of the fish, the swimming motion of the fish, will help to re uh, will help to distribute. Okay, will help to distribute uh, the oxygen-rich blood throughout the body. Okay, the movement of the fish, the swimming motion of the fish, will help to distribute uh, the blood coming from the gills okay so the the blood passes through the heart once in each complete circuit this arrangement is called as the single circulation contraction of the ventricle pumps gill to sorry pumps blood to gill capillary so in gills there is a net, net diffusion of oxygen into the oxygen into the blood and carbon dioxide out of the blood so as the fish swims contraction and relaxation of the muscles helps accelerate blood circulation. So this is really important because when the blood uh, is, um, when the blood comes out uh, of the uh, gills capillary, obviously the blood pressure will, will drop. Okay, so in order to help the movement of the blood, uh, the fish has to swim. Okay, so the fish has to swim to help to distribute, um, to distribute blood uh, throughout the body. So kalau macam contohnya kan, kalau contohnya saya bagi contoh, uh, dalam industri um, untuk harvest uh, shark fins kan untuk harvest shark fins uh, nelayan tu dia akan um, ambil shark fins je kan so dia ambil shark fins the whole of the shark body dia akan just throw away uh, throw back into the into the ocean so ap apa kesan dia dia akan menyebabkan uh, shark tu lemas lah faham tak bila dia lemas sebab apa dia lemas sebab dia tak boleh tak berenang dah Sebab apa dia tak ada fin that helps the shark to to swim. Okay, so the movement motion of the shark will help to circulate blood circulation throughout the body. So, siapa-siapa yang makan shark fin tu, uh, stop lah. Uh, sebab it is, dia adalah penganayaan untuk shark tu. Uh, okay, so it, it is not good. Uh, dia adalah um, apa, some kind of torture lah to, the, to that animal. Alright, so kalau dia, dia nak fish shark, Ambil the whole fish. Uh, ambil the whole fish, bukan ambil fin je and then throw away the uh, apa, yang the rest. Okay. So uh, next, double circulation. Okay, so for double circulation, you have um, uh, more active organism. Okay, more active organism depends on double circulation. So uh, example are amphibians, reptiles and also mammals. So they have double circulation. So what is double circulation? which is a circulatory system consisting of separate pulmonary and systemic circuit. Okay, so in which the blood passes through the heart 
after completing each circuit. So for the pulmonary circuit, the heart pumps the blood to the lung, get to the lung to be uh, to to supply uh, oxygen. Okay, so carbon dioxide will be removed and oxygen will enter back into the blood to to so that the blood uh, can can enter it back into the heart that uh, that is um, full of oxygen. Okay. And then for the systemic circuit, uh, the heart will pump again to distribute oxygen rich blood throughout the uh, body. Okay, so advantage of double circulation is to provide a vigorous blood flow to the body uh, to the body organs. Okay, so this is because after the blood passes through the blood capillaries of the lung or skin, so the heart repressurizes uh, re the blood then delivered to body tissues. So if you look at this statement, Okay, after the blood passes through the gills of the uh, lungs and also skin. So for, for animals such as uh, amphibians, okay, so they also depend on skin, okay, for gas exchange. Okay, they have pulmocutaneous uh, circuit. You know, boleh tambah lah macam contoh amphibians. Um, they, uh, they don't have pulmonary circuit but they have pulmocutaneous circuit, okay, which depends on, ox uh, which depend on lung and also skin for res for respiratory surface for exchange of gas okay so kalau macam darah tu bila bila jantung pump ke pulmonary circuit obviously uh, the blood pressure will uh, will be reduced sebab apa uh, blood pressure tu akan um, darah tu akan uh, dissipate uh, the pressure will dissipate as it enters into the blood capillaries of the lung Tapi uh, advantage dia adalah bila dia uh, go back into the heart, so the, the heart will repressurize, re okay, repressurize the blood with high pressure before uh, the, the heart pumps the blood into the systemic circuit which is uh, a longer circuit compared to the pulmonary circuit. Okay, so longer circuit sebab dia nak kena distribute um, oxygen rich blood throughout the body, okay, throughout the body. So uh, for amphibians, okay, so this is the um, pulmonary, sorry, the double circulation in amph amphibians. So they have pulmocutaneous circuits that depends on the, the lung and also skin for respiratory surface, okay, where, uh, respir uh, where gaseous exchange occurs. So for frog, they have three chambers of heart, which is the two atrium and one ventricle, okay, two atria and one ventricle. So uh, between uh, between the left and right side of the ventricle here, they, they do not have um, a septum, okay, septum. So they have ridges, ridges, the ridge, okay, macam uh, kawasan yang tak rata kat situ kan. So a ridge uh, in the ventricle will divert almost 90% of oxygen, this is oxygen rich blood, okay, oxygen rich blood from the left atrium, so this is the left atrium, to the ventricle, so the ventricle will pump oxygen blood, okay, to the fog artery, um, which is here, it enters into the systemic circuit, okay. So most oxygen poor blood from the right atrium, so coming from the uh, systemic, uh, systemic circuit, systemic capillaries here, okay, so it returns oxygen poor blood back to the heart that enters into the uh, right atrium here, okay. So most oxygen poor blood from the right atrium uh, enters into the pulmocutaneous circuit. Okay, so this is the pulmocutaneous circuit that depends on lung and also skin for respiratory uh, surface. Okay. So next, you have the uh, is the mammals and birds. Okay, so for mammals and birds, they have uh, four chambered heart. Okay, four chambered heart, which is two atria and two uh, ventricles. So you have the right atrium, left atrium right ventricle, left ventricle. So they have two circuit, the pulmonary circuit which is uh, to the to the uh, lungs okay and then uh, systemic circuit to the uh, to all body uh, organs within the body okay. So uh, separating between the uh, right and the left ventricle you have a septum okay so a complete septum which is the ventricle are, sep uh, are completely separated so there is no mixture of oxygen uh, poor blood and oxygen rich blood okay so the the heart left side here okay so this is the left side pumps oxygen rich blood 
Selalunya bila dalam diagram yang warna merah ni it indicates uh, oxygen rich blood. Okay, the the blue the blue side here is oxygen poor uh, blood. So left side is always related to oxygen rich blood. The uh, the right side here is oxygen poor blood. Okay. So blood enters the heart twice each time it tours the body. So the circulatory system needs to deliver much more nutrients and oxygen to tissue and remove more carbon dioxide and wastes. Okay. So um, so this is for mammals and birds. Okay. So next uh, we are going to look at the structure and function of the heart and uh, blood vessels. Okay. So the heart structure. So as you can see here, so this is the heart structure. So the heart structure is located in the thoracic cavity behind the sternum which is the bo uh, bre uh, breastbone. Kalau orang rasa awak punya kat uh, tengah ada ada tu kan. So uh, tulang rusuk awak, the, your rib cage. So this is your rib cage. Rib cage okay, that uh, protects your lungs. And then you have your uh, sternum. So under the sternum you have your heart. Okay, so this is the apex of the heart. So the apex of the heart will, will uh, will be oriented uh, to the left, okay, to the left side of uh, of your chest, yeah, okay. So it is not much uh, bigger than your fists. So bolehlah letak awak punya uh, fist dekat dada tu, kan. So itulah size awak punya jantung. So most, uh, consists mostly of the cardiac muscle. So the cardiac muscle, uh, it can um, uh, triggers its own impulse, okay, it, its own impulse so that it uh, it causes the muscle of the uh, of the heart which is the cardiac muscle to be able to contract. So the contraction of the muscle of the heart does not depend on your brain, okay. The contraction of your of your heart does not depend on the instruction from your uh, from your brain, okay. Um, so heart structure. So the heart is enclosed by double wall protective sac called the pericardium. So this is the pericardium. Pericardium, it is, uh, uh, the function of it is to protect the heart. Okay. So for the pericardium, it has two layers. Okay, two main layers, which is the fibrous pericardium. The function of the fibrous pericardium, one of the, one of the benefit of this pericardium is that uh, it controls how much the heart can expand. Okay, so this is to protect the heart from overfilling with blood. Okay, and um, for the serous pericardium, okay, it is divided into two layers, which is the parietal pericardium. This one here, the blue line here, okay, is the per uh, parietal uh, pericardium, uh, and also the one. Uh, yang warna merah ni, uh, lining the, just outside of the heart here, heart muscles here. You have the visceral pericardium or another term for it is epicardium. The outer layer of the heart here, warna merah ni. Kalau tengok carefully, it is the epicardium or the visceral uh, cardium. So as the name implies, okay, serous pericardium is to secrete some kind of fluid, okay, that, uh, that will be stored in this pericardial cavity, okay, pericardial cavity, so which is produced by serous pericardium that uh, serous pericardium produces fluid that will be filled in this cavity, okay, pericardial fluid. So what is the, what is the function of this pericardial uh, fluid is to, uh, is to act as um, macam pelinci lah, ha, macam tu. Um, provide as lubrication, okay, it, it provides as a lubrication so that uh, it reduces friction when the heart is pumping, okay, when the heart is pumping, uh, it always pumps, it always contracts, okay, so to, to reduce friction and all that, so that is the function of a uh, serous pericardium to produce this pericardial fluid that is stored in this pericardial cavity, okay. So fibrous pericardium is to, uh, is to, uh, Limit, okay, limit the amount of blood that enters into the heart from, uh, pre uh, it prevents the heart from overfilling with, with blood, okay, as it, uh, as it, as it relaxes. Okay, so the heart wall has three uh, tissue layers, okay, which is the endocardium. So this is the endocardium, 
bahagian dalam ni the one that faces the uh, the cavity within the heart the the atrium okay the cavity of the atrium the cavity of the ventricle so uh, lining that cavity is the endocardium okay so the feature of the endocardium it is thin and smooth okay it is thin and smooth uh, 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 which lies uh, lines which lines the the interior of the heart so this is to provide a smooth surface for easy flow as blood travels through the heart okay so next here the thick uh, the thick part here okay so this is the myocardium the cardiac muscle so it is the thickest layer and pump blood uh, through the vessels so this these are the vessels you have the uh, aorta okay you have the pulmonary uh, artery okay, coming out of the uh, left left atrium okay left atrium so uh, the myocardium is the thickest layer and pumps blood to the, to the vessels so vessels is the aorta and pulmonary uh, artery um so they are myogenic so what is myogenic so my, myogenic is that the myocardium is capable of initiating its own impulse that uh, that causes the contraction of the muscle that causes the the heart to be able to pump okay so uh, uh, so this is to generate their own excitatory impulses so it means that the contraction of the uh, of the heart is not dependent on the instruction from the brain okay the heart can initiate its own impulse so that the heart can pump by its own okay that is myogenic and then outside here okay uh, the the layer outside here is the epicardium or the visceral pericardium which is part of the serous pericardium tadi tadi kita tengok kan serous uh, serous uh, pericardium is uh, consists of parietal pericardium uh, visceral pericardium and also pericardial cavity that which uh, which is uh, which is filled with pericardial fluid so visceral pericardium is also epicardium so they they are the same epicardium and visceral pericardium is is the same term okay uh, so which is the uh, outside layer of the heart here um, it is a serous membrane that forms the thin outermost layer of the heart wall okay so tiga layer endocardium myocardium epi cardium okay so to protect the heart you have the fibrous uh, pericardium here okay okay so this is the structure of the heart kalau tengok gambar raja ni wah wah banyaknya kan structure dia tapi sebenarnya uh, simple je okay so how can you analyze you have to analyze this diagram uh, one by one okay so you look at uh, this side here okay so this side here you have the right side of the heart okay so the right side of the heart uh, here you have the right atrium okay and then here you have the right ventricle between the right and left uh, between sorry between the right atrium and the right ventricle you have a valve we call it as the tricuspid valve okay tricuspid valve um, and then on this side here you have the left side of the heart so the left side of the heart you have the left atrium you have the left ventricle so between the left uh, atrium and left ventricle you have the mitral valve or bicuspid valve okay mitral valve or bicuspid valve this valve as you can see here it is held by uh, a fiber a, a strong fiber we call it as the chordae tendineae okay chordae tendineae is uh, is a fiber that holds the mitral valve to the wall of the uh, ventricle here okay so and then you have here is the aorta okay sorry not aorta you have the pulmonary uh, pulmonary arteries okay pulmonary arteries what is the function of the pulmonary artery is to um, allow oxygen poor blood okay that is pumped by the right ventricle right ventricle here right ventricle pumps oxygen poor blood out into the uh, into the pulmonary artery pulmonary artery is branched into the left pulmonary arteries and right pulmonary arteries dia pergi kat mana dia pergi dekat left and right lungs okay so the blue color here indicates that it carries oxygen poor blood okay so oxygen poor blood will go to the left lungs to will go to the right lungs through the left pulmonary artery 
through the right pulmonary arteries. So in the in the lungs, so uh, re, uh, gas exchange will, will occur from oxygen poor blood, it becomes oxygen rich blood. So the oxygen rich blood coming from the lungs will enter back into the heart to the left side of the heart. It enters first into the left atrium. So the left atrium will receive oxygen rich blood. Okay, it receives oxygen rich blood. So oxygen rich blood will enter into the uh, left ventricle. So as you can see in this diagram, the, the wall of the left ventricle is thicker compared to the uh, right uh, ventricle. Okay, so the why is it uh, why is it that the uh, the uh, the wall of the left ventricle is thicker because the left ventricle has to contract more forcefully so that uh, the left ventricle can pump the oxygen rich blood out of the heart. Okay, through the aorta. Okay, through the aorta and uh, enters into the systemic circuit. Okay, so the, so the systemic circuit will convey blood uh, to the upper part of your body and to the lower part of the uh, body. Okay, uh, so as you can see, so this is to the lower part of the body. So this one is to the upper part of the body. Okay, your head, uh, your brain. Okay, uh, this one is to the your abdomen, uh, abdomen and also to your legs. So Inferior vena cava here, okay, so inferior vena cava is to bring oxygen blood, oxygen poor blood, okay, oxygen poor blood coming from the systemic circuit enters into the right uh, atrium, okay, so the right atrium, balik semula macam tadi kan, to, to the left, uh, sorry, to the right ventricle, to the pulmonary arteries, okay, so kalau tengok istilah arteri ni sebenarnya, kalau kita fahamkan tadi, Arteri adalah salur darah yang bawa keluar darah keluar daripada jantung sebenarnya. Okay, arteries is the blood vessels that brings um, that brings blood out of the heart. Okay, veins are the blood vessels that uh, brings uh, blood towards the heart. Okay, so kalau kita nak tengok istilah ialah arteri kebanyakan arteri it brings oxygen poor blood kecuali pulmonary artery. Okay, kalau vein uh, kebanyakannya dia akan carry oxygen poor blood kecuali pulmonary veins. Pulmonary vein it carries oxygen rich blood coming from the uh, from the heart. Okay so itu akan kena fahamkan lah. And then we have valve. Okay. So valve tadi kita tengok okay ada tri uh, tricuspid valve dekat right side. Kita ada mitral valve dekat left side between uh, artery and also uh, ventricle. Here we have here is the aortic valve. Okay aortic valve uh, which is between the uh, left ventricle and the uh, aorta. The okay, aortic valve is between the left ventricle and the aorta. Here you have the pulmonary valve. Okay, uh, pulmonary valve is between uh, the right ventricle and also pulmonary uh, artery. Okay, um, kalau untuk, kalau uh, boleh take note kat sini, kalau untuk tricuspid valve and bicuspid valve, kalau susah nak ingat nama dia kan, mana satu tricuspid, uh, tricuspid mana satu mitra, mana satu bicuspid, you all can use also atrioventricular valve. These two, okay, these two is also known as atrioventricular valve, okay. Kalau macam let's say dalam exam, dia suruh namakan uh, valve ni, tiba-tiba awak terconfuse. Oh mana satu bicuspid, mana satu tricuspid uh, kan, awak tak tahu, awak terlupa dia kiri ke kanan. Just use atrioventricular valve, okay. Um, lepas tu kita ada kat sini nama lain untuk yang uh, yang aortic valve dengan pulmonary valve adalah semilunar valve, okay. This, these two valve is also known as semilunar valve, okay. Semilunar valve. Cuma kalau kat sini kita pernah namakan dia aortic semilunar valve. This one we call it as the uh, pulmonary semilunar valve, okay. Ha, so Walaupun nak tengok, oh serabut je tengok gambar gambar jantung ni kan banyaknya labeling tapi cuba tengok dia satu persatu, analyze. Analyze daripada uh, right region first and then moving on to the left region. Dia mesti start dengan right region dulu. Right region, oxygen, poor blood. Left region is oxygen, rich blood. Okay. Okay. 
So the heart chambers um, and the heart function. So for for our heart, okay, we have two atria. So the atria have thin walls. Kenapa thin walls? But they're lebih dekat dengan uh, ventricle lah. Yeah, so they have, they don't have to contract forcefully because they only pump blood in the short distance which is into the uh, the next chamber which is the ventricle, okay. So serve as a collection chambers uh, for blood returning to the heart and pump, uh, pump the blood in a short distance into the ventricles. So as for the ventricles, they have thicker wall compared to the atria because they have to contract much more forcefully. Uh, as for the left ventricle, it is thicker and more muscular compared to the right ventricle. So this is because it has to produce higher pressure to pump blood throughout the body via the systemic circuit. So the left ventricle will pump oxygen-rich blood to the systemic circuit. The right ventricle, okay, uh, the wall is not as thick as the left ventricle because uh, the left ventricle will pump oxygen poor blood in a short distance only which is to the lung. Dekat dengan uh, jantung je kan? Uh, lung is nearer to the heart so the, the right ventricle does not have to be uh, as thick as the left ventricle because the right ventricle will only pump the oxygen uh, poor blood to the to the lung. Okay. So the heart function is to generate uh, blood pressure, root, uh, rooting blood into pulmonary and systemic circulations, uh, ensuring one-way blood flow. Okay, so and also regulating blood supply to match uh, metabolic needs. Okay, so if if your body requires much more oxygen, much more uh, oxygen at that uh, at that uh, point of time, like you are exercising or the blood can experiment or the or your open exercise. So when you when you exercise more, when your body requires much more oxygen, can uh, so your heart will pump uh, faster. Okay, compared to your uh, relaxed uh, mode. Okay. And then, okay, so the heart valves, okay, so between the, between each atrium and ventricle, atrium, okay, left, uh, sorry, the right side, the left side, you have the left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. So between the atrium and ventricle, you have the atrioventricular valve, AV valve, okay. To be specific, on the right side, you have the tricuspid valve. On the uh, left side, you have the bicuspid valve or mitral valve, okay. So ini yang tanda question mark ni adalah arrow sebenarnya. Okay, dia tak keluar uh, simbol arrow tu. So the semilunar valve, okay, semilunar valve are located between the two exits of the heart. So this is the semilunar valve, okay. Between the right uh, ventricle and the pulmonary artery, you have the uh, pulmonary semi semilunar valve. So this is the pulmonary semilunar valve. Between the left ventricle and the aorta, you have the aortic semilunar valve. Okay, so the valve function is to prevent backflow between the blood, uh, backflow of blood, okay, because the blood is pumped in with high pressure. So this is to prevent uh, backflow of the heart, sorry, backflow of the blood uh, and keep moving in one direction. Okay, supaya darah tu bila dah masuk ventricle, dia tak patah balik masuk uh, atrium. Okay. Only in one direction. This is uh, a cross section lah of how uh, the valve looks like. Okay. Right side you have the tricuspid valve. Left side you have the bicuspid valve. Okay, or mitral valve. Tapi nama uh, nama yang mudah nak ingat adalah atrioventricular valve. Here you have the aortic uh, semilunar valve. You have here is the uh, pulmonary semilunar valve. Okay. Cross section. This is cross section. Okay, structure and function of blood vessels, okay. So blood vessels, three main blood vessels, you have the artery, capillaries and also veins. So um, the cavity of blood vessels are aligned with endothelium. So all these three blood vessels, bahagian dalam dia ada sejenis lapisan sel uh, yang kita namakan dia sebagai endothelium, okay, which is a single layer of flattened epithelial cells. Because untuk ketiga-tiga blood vessels ni mesti ada endothelium. Okay, so networks of capillaries uh, called capillary beds, okay, passes through body tissues. So maksudnya dalam setiap organ dalam badan awak ni, kan, uh, so mesti mesti akan ada capillary beds. Okay, so this is to provide oxygen, nutrients, okay, from the blood. 
So exchange of materials from the uh, from the blood occurs via diffusion across porous wall of capillaries into interstitial fluid and into uh, body cells. Okay, so this is the feature of blood capillaries. Feature of blood capillaries, they are porous. So that exchange of materials, nutrients and respiratory gas can occur from blood into interstitial fluid into cells. Itu kalau dia nak provide nutrients, provide oxygen. Uh, uh, vice versa, from cell into interstitial fluid into blood in the blood capillaries is waste and also carbon dioxide. So capillary then converge into granules and also veins. Okay. So from veins back into the, uh, carries back uh, blood into the heart. So basically, uh, arteries are blood vessels that carries blood away from the heart. Veins, okay, carries blood back towards the heart. Okay, huh? So this is uh, the structure, okay, the whole uh, structure to picturize uh, between the three main blood vessels. So here you have the artery, the blood capillaries in the capillary beds of body tissues, okay, and also veins. Okay, by looking at this diagram, as you can see, the structure of um, all the three blood vessels, they, they are aligned with endothelium. Okay, capillary endothelium. Kat bahagian dalam ni. Bahagian dalam ni ada um, endothelium. So nampak endothelium. Same goes to the blood capillaries. They have capillary endothelium. It's a, a, a one cell thick layer of cell, epithelial cells. Okay. So as for the vein, uh, as for the vein, because they carry blood with low blood pressure, so they will have valve. Uh, and, the, and the wall, the smooth muscle here, Okay, the smooth muscle yang warna uh, merah ni is thinner compared to the smooth muscle within the uh, artery. So why? Because artery, it carries blood with high blood pressure, high velocity. So they do not require valve. Okay, and they have thicker uh, uh, smooth muscle here. Okay, so by having thicker smooth muscle here, it allows artery to be able to vasodilate and, and also vasoconstrict, dilate and also constrict. Okay. So outside here, you have the outside layer that uh, consists of um, elastic tissues and uh, uh, collagen. Okay, so this is to uh, protect the blood vessels. Okay, uh, and then, okay, so this, uh, these are the three layers of blood vessels. So blood vessels, same as the heart, it has three layers. Okay, which is uh, the inner layer uh, is the tunica intima. So basically, tunica intima is the endothelium layer. Okay, so the endothelium layer is the tunica intima, yang bagian dalam ni, which is composed of one cell thick of epithelial cells, which is tunica intima. And then we have tunica media, the middle muscular and elastic layer. So this is the tunica intima. Okay, tunica intima. So tunica intima and the outer layer is tunica adventitia or uh, tunica externa is the outer layer here. Okay, the outer layer here is the tunica uh, adventitia or tunica externa. Okay, so uh, as for the tunica intima, it is composed of the endothelium wrapped by a thin layer of connective tissue called the basal lamina. So uh, this is the basal lamina. Okay, basal lamina is this one here, connect, composed of connective tissue just after the uh, endothelium layer, just uh, uh, per covering the tunica intima. Same goes to the blood capillaries. It is also covered by the uh, basal lamina. Okay. So uh, uh, as for the tunica media, it consists of uh, smooth muscles and elastic fibers. As for the tunica adventitia, it consists of collagen and also connective tissues. For the tunica intima, the function of um, having uh, a thin layer of, uh, of endothelium okay, is uh, is to provide a smooth inner surface that minimizes resistance to uh, to flow of blood. So it is it is smooth. Okay, it provides a smooth layer so that um, uh, blood can flow easily without any resistance. And as for the uh, blood capillaries, okay, it composed of one cell thick is is to allow uh, easy diffusion. Okay, diffusion of respiratory gas and also nutrients out of the blood capillaries through the uh, through the endothelium layer. Uh, for the for the 
blood capillaries, they are lacking tunica media and also tunica adventitia. Only artery and vein have these uh, two layers. Okay, artery and vein have three layers, tunica intima, media and also adventitia. Blood capillaries only have tunica intima, okay, endothelium. So for tunica media, uh, the function of tunica uh, media is uh, it composed of smooth muscles that allows the vessel to constrict and dilate, vasoconstriction and vaso uh, dilation. Okay, so this is to regulate blood flow. So kalau macam uh, dia nak uh, allow more blood to flow at certain area, so the blood vessel will also dilate. Okay, uh, to uh, to re uh, to reduce the flow of blood in certain area, so it, uh, it will also constrict. Okay, so uh, elastic fibers allow blood vessels to stretch and recoil to maintain blood pressure. So uh, as you know, uh, artery, okay, artery will receive blood that is pumped um, out of the heart. So uh, the heart will pump blood at high pressure, okay, at, at, uh, at high pressure. So this will cause uh, the blood vessels to, uh, especially the artery, to stretch and then recoil. Stretch, berkembang, and then recoil, puncuk balik. Kembang, So this, so this will uh, generate or maintain a normal blood pressure. Okay, the the stretching and the recoiling of blood uh, of uh, of artery will will maintain a normal blood pressure. So itu yang akan menghasilkan blood pressure sebenarnya. Okay, the stretching and the recoiling of uh, blood vessels due to the flow of blood that flows with high pressure that comes from the uh, from the heart. Okay, and then for the tunica adventitia. Uh, consists of collagen and connective tissues. Uh, function uh, of the collagen is to make the uh, the blood vessels uh, stronger and more durable. Okay. So as you can see, so this is um, a microscopic image. Okay, uh, a prepared slide. Okay, uh, or image of uh, of the two uh, blood vessels. So here you have the artery. As you can see, the diameter of the artery will be smaller compared to the vein. So the vein will have a bigger diameter. But uh, for the vein, okay, uh, for the vein, the wall, the tunica media wall is uh, thinner compared to the tunica media of the artery. So the, the wall will be thicker because it has to, uh, to withstand high blood pressure, okay, uh, of blood coming from the heart. Um, so ini kalau drawing dia lah. So kalau drawing dia ada tiga layers, uh, tunica externa or tunica adventitia, the outer uh, uh, one of the blood vessels, okay, elastic and also it uh, consists of um, connective tissues, media, tunica media, smooth muscles and also tunica intima here which is uh, composed of endothelium layer, okay, endothelium. Ini yang warna kuning ni adalah vessel lamina. Okay, same goes to this one. Ini kalau untuk vena, kalau untuk artery, uh, tunica media is uh, thicker. You have uh, the tunica media uh, intima. So nampak dia macam um, dia punya structure dia. This one it allows the uh, the artery to be able to to uh, stretch and also recoil. Okay, due to the high blood pressure, uh, to due to the high um, blood pressure and velocity coming from the heart. Here you have the tunica. Uh, external. Okay. So these are the difference between uh, between between the arteries, capillaries, and also veins. Okay. So basically, for arteries, okay, it carries or transport blood away from the heart. Okay, towards the body tissues. So sama lah kalau dia kalau aorta kan uh, aorta um, is the beginning of the artery uh, coming uh, from the heart. So the, the left ventricle contracts, the oxygen rich blood will enter into the aorta, into the artery, into the systemic circuit. Okay, so away from the heart. As for the capillaries, connects between arterioles and also vent, uh, venules. Uh, and then as for vein, it transport blood towards the heart. Okay, towards the heart. So, kalau contohnya kita ada superior and uh, inferior vena cava. Okay, uh, and then um, uh, pulmonary veins. Pulmonary veins, they carry up oxygen rich blood coming from the uh, lungs into the heart. Okay, pulmonary vein. From the from the lung into the heart carrying oxygen rich blood. So, for arteries, okay, uh, 
Oh dah dalam kepala awak dia dah memang oh dah memang sihat. Okey awak atli dia carry oksigen rich blood oxidated blood kecuali pulmonary artery. So pulmonary artery it carries oxygen poor blood to the lung. Okay to the lung from the uh, right ventricle. From the uh, right ventricle lah. So cam, uh, uh, capillaries, so capillary beds have larger cross-sectional areas for exchange of materials, uh, respiratory gases, nutrients and also waste with uh, with the cells. Okay. So for the vein, okay, so ini memang dah set dah dalam kepala awak kan. Um, uh, transport deoxygenated blood. So most of the veins, okay, it carries deoxygenated blood except pulmonary vein. Okay, so pulmonary vein, it carries uh, oxygen-rich blood from the lung to the left ventricle. Sorry, to the uh, left atrium. Okay, to the left uh, atrium. Um, okay, so next, artery. The wall of the arteries can constrict and dilate. Uh, it can stretch and recoil. Okay, so betul lah awak tengok structure dia macam ni. Can dia... Uh, dia macam ni. So this one, it, uh, it, uh, it enables the artery to stretch and also recoil. Okay, as it receives blood with high velocity and high pressure coming from the heart. So the lumen of the artery will be smaller. Okay, uh, relative to its diameter uh, compared to the vein. So the vein will have larger lumen relative to its uh, diameter. As for the capillaries, it cannot constrict. So what happens? They are lacking. Yeah, it lacking, it lacks uh, the tunica media. It does not have any smooth muscle. It only have the endothelium layer. Okay, so it is the smallest uh, blood vessels. Uh, the diameter is slightly la uh, greater than the red blood cells. Okay, so this is to ensure that there's efficient diffusion of nutrients and also uh, oxygen out of the red blood cells into the interstitial fluid into your body cells and uh, the opposite direction, your body cells produces carbon dioxide and metabolic wastes will diffuse out of the cell into the interstitial fluid and into your blood capillaries. So the process is just through diffusion, okay? As for the artery, it, uh, it has no uh, valve. Uh, same goes to capillaries, obviously there's no valve. And then vein. Uh, uh, presence of valve, okay? So upper, it carries uh, blood with low pressure. Okay, so to, this is to prevent backflow of uh, of uh, low pressure blood uh, and maintain unidirectional uh, blood flow. Okay, so this is to make sure that uh, blood flows in the opposite direction and not uh, flowing backward. So for the arteries, uh, uh, they have no valve except semilunar valve. Kan, tadi kita tengok antara uh, left ventricle dengan aorta ada semilunar valve, aortic semilunar valve. Antara right uh, ventricle dengan pulmonary artery ada pulmonary semilunar valve. Okay. So, so uh, kecuali tadi lah aorta dengan pulmonary semilunar, sorry pulmonary artery ada semilunar valve. So artery, uh, they have thick uh, muscular wall which is the tunica media. So with sm uh, more smooth muscle, uh, smooth muscles and uh, elastic fibers. So this is to with, uh, withstand a blood, a blood pump at high pressure and high velocity coming from the heart. Okay. So uh, kalau vein, uh, thinner wall with less smooth and elastic muscle fibers and uh, than arteries because blood flows under low velocity and uh, pressure. Okay, so for capillaries, obviously they, they have no tunica media, no tunica adventitia, so they have no smooth muscle. So they have very thin walls that consists of one, uh, consists of endo endothelium only, so it is only one cell thick and they cover by basal lamina. So for capillaries, they are microscopic, they are, they have microscopic pores. Okay, so ini untuk apa? Exchange of substances. Okay, exchange uh, substances between blood and also interstitial fluid. Um, surrounding the uh, body cells. Okay. So kita uh, break sekejap dua minit before we move on to the next part which is heart circulation, cardiac cycle and cardiac output. If you have uh, any question you can ask. If not, um, uh, just take a break. <laughs>
Ini uh, attendance untuk tutorial S10 semalam. So S10 boleh isi. So ini uh, lecture hari ni. Oh boleh isi dulu.
Okay. <clears throat> so I hope so far uh, you all um, can follow, you can answer. Sebab sebenarnya chapter ni dia tak susah pun, dia just uh, perlukan awak baca, fahamkan, tengok diagram. Okay, ha, itu je. It's not so hard. Okay. So next is heart circulation, cardiac cycle and also cardiac output. Okay, so heart circulation. So a human has double heart circulation. So we have a pulmonary circuit, okay, which is to the lung, uh, and then systemic circuit, which is from the heart to all body tissues, okay, except the lung, okay. So systemic circuit also provide um, blood circulation to the to the heart itself. <coughs> okay, so for the pulmonary circuit, or pulmonary pulmonary circuit uh, circulation. So if you can see, if you look at this diagram actually, um, again, if you look at a diagram and you see that diagram is really complicated, nampak serabut macam-macam ada dalam ni, so just analyze the diagram one by one, okay? So as I've mentioned, again, this is the same explanation. So you look at the right side of the heart. So the right side, as you can see, it is blue in color. So when it is blue in color, obviously it carries oxygen poor blood. Okay, so here you have the right atrium, right ventricle, AV valve. Okay, so this is the inferior vena cava. So it means that from the right side of the heart, um, firstly, oxygen poor blood okay, will enter uh, 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 through the uh, inferior vena cava, which carries oxygen poor blood coming from the systemic circuit. So this is the systemic circuit systemic circuit uh, of the lower part of your body, okay? So systemic circuit also occurs uh, in the upper part of your body, which is your, uh, your head, your brain, okay? Uh, and then, uh, okay, so uh, kita tengok yang kat bawah ni dulu. Okay, oxygen poor blood uh, that comes from the systemic circuit uh, of your body, the lower part of your body, uh, will enter into the inferior vena cava. So inferior vena cava will convey oxygen poor blood and enters into the right atrium, okay? So from the right atrium, as you can see, the wall of the right uh, atrium is thinner compared to the ventricle. So the right atrium has to pump blood to the right ventricle. So the right ventricle then pumps oxygen poor blood, okay, out of the heart, okay, through the, uh, this valve, we call it as the pulmonary semilunar valve, okay, into the, uh, pulmonary artery. Okay, so pulmonary artery will branch to the uh, left pulmonary artery and to the right pulmonary artery. From the left pulmonary artery, it enters into the left lung. From the right pulmonary artery, it enters into the left, sorry, into the right. This is right, sorry. This is right uh, pulmonary artery into the right uh, lungs. Okay, so this is where in the lung, it enters into the pulmonary Second, pulmonary circulation. So this is where oxy, uh, oxygen will diffuse into the blood, carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the blood in the uh, capillary of alveolus. Okay, in the in the lung you have many uh, alveolus. Okay, air sac we call it uh, we call it as the alveolus, which is compact with blood vessels. Okay, so um, uh, as the uh, oxygen load into the blood, so the oxygen will uh, will become oxygen-rich blood, oxy oxygenated blood. So the oxy oxygenated blood, okay, will enter in back into the heart through the um, this uh, blood vessel. We call it as the pulmonary vein. Okay, so the pulmonary vein will allow oxygen-rich uh, blood coming from the left and right lungs, okay, back into the only into the uh, left left atrium. Okay, so it means that the left atrium receive oxygen-rich blood coming from both lungs, coming from the pulmonary circuit. So the left atrium will then pump the oxygen-rich blood into the left ventricle. Okay, so the left ventricle which have thicker wall compared to the right ventricle will pump blood out of the heart into the systemic circuit. Okay, uh, which enters into the aorta, 
Okay, so the aorta will convey blood into three directions. One, to the blood vessels surrounding the heart itself, which is the uh, coronary artery. Okay, and then to the uh, artery that conveys blood to the lower part of the body in, uh, in the systemic circuit. And also uh, the, the aorta also conveys blood to the upper part of the body, uh, which is the, um, the uh, forelimb, okay, forelimb and also the head, lah, the brain, okay, the forelimb and also the brain. You need, this is the lower part, the abdomen, the abdomen and also the hind limb, okay. Um, so, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, gas exchange occurs in the capillary uh, uh, bed of, uh, of uh, body tissues and then uh, the same process occurs, okay. It is a, a it is a circle, a, a circulatory system. Okay, so it uh, it goes back into the into the right atrium through the uh, inferior vena cava for the lower part. For the upper part, it goes back into the right uh, atrium through the superior vena cava. Okay, superior vena cava it carries oxygen for blood coming from the uh, forelimb and also the upper part of your body. Okay, back into the right atrium. So. Bila tengok gambar ni, awak jangan cuak, jangan panik, tengok dia satu-satu. Okay, dia tak susah pun. Okay, so we uh, we look at uh, for the pulmonary uh, circulation. So, right ventricle. Okay, this is the right ventricle. Okay. Uh, pumps oxygenated blood uh, to the lungs. Okay, to the lungs. And then through the pulmonary arteries. Uh, pulmonary arteries, as I said, it carries oxygen for blood uh, to the to the lung. So uh, it enters into the capillary beds of the lung, gas exchange occurs, uh, uh, return back oxygen rich blood to the heart uh, that enters into the uh, left atrium through the pulmonary vein. Okay, pulmonary vein. So for this uh, systemic circuit from the left atrium, okay, carries oxygen rich blood to the left ventricle. From the left ventricle pumps the blood to all part of the body except the lung. So the aorta carries blood to the artery. Uh, artery carries oxygenated blood to the forelimb and hindlimb. Forelimb, uh, the upper part, uh, including the heads. Hindlimb, uh, uh, your legs, your abdomen, your bagian bawah badan. And then blood enters the blood capillaries of organ and tissues. Uh, and then get a gas exchange occurs. Okay, so uh, uh, blood becomes uh, oxygen poor blood, written back but, uh, to the heart via the superior vena cava and also inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava, the upper part of your body, inferior vena cava from the lower part of your body, back to the heart, okay, and enters into the right atrium. Then the cycle, uh, the cycle occurs, but it's similar. Right atrium, right ventricle, uh, pulmonary, uh, pulmonary artery to the lungs, okay. Uh, itu dia masuk kepada pul uh, pulmonary circuit. Okay, so it that is uh, the uh, the blood uh, the 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 blood circulation. Okay, double circulation that occurs in our body. Okay, so next is cardiac cycle. Okay, so what is cardiac cycle? It is the alternating periods of contraction and relaxation in one complete heartbeat. Uh, Saya dah mention semalam, your heartbeat is the same as your pulse rate. Okay, so one complete heartbeat, it takes about 0 0.8 second. Cuba kira untuk berap, uh, untuk satu minit, what is the average heartbeat for one minute? Can anybody figure out? Okay, around 72 to 75. Okay, um, around something like that. Okay, so that is the normal resting uh, heartbeat of an average person. Okay, so for a cardiac cycle, uh, for, for, for the heart to contract and relax, kita ada dua istilah ni, systole and diastole. So systole is the contraction phase of the heart chambers. Okay, so the we have the atrium, atrial systole, uh, um, atrial diastole, atrial systole tu maksudnya atrium uh, contract. Um, atrial diastole maksudnya uh, atrium relaxed. Kalau contract maksudnya dia akan contract push uh, the the blood out of the chambers. Okay, kalau relax to collect, 
to collect the, the, the blood into, into the chambers. That is the function of diastole relaxation phase, to collect the heart into the chambers. Chambers referring to either atrium or ventricle. <coughs> okay, so um, produce rhythmic lup dub sound. Okay, so generated by the turbulence of blood against uh, closed heart vessels. So for the lup sound, it is the first heart sound, okay, created when the blood recoil at the closed ventricular valve uh, marks the beginning of the ventricular systole. Ventricular systole maksudnya apa? Ventricle contract, right? So, apa, kenapa dia contract? Sebab dia nak push the blood out of the ventricle. So, imagine kat sini kita ada left ventricle, kita ada right ventricle. So, when the ventricle systole, it means that the ventricle is contracting. Bila dia contract, this uh, AV valve akan closed. And so the high pressure within the ventricle due to the contracting of the ventricle causes uh, the high blood pressure to push or to um, crash through this, uh, to this um, uh, AV valve, okay? When, uh, when the high uh, blood pressure valve hits this AV valve, it produces the lap sound. Faham eh? So, every uh, ventricle, they can contract, contract, maksudnya they can create high blood pressure within the ventricle. So, the high blood pressure will hit the AV valve, okay. So, this will produce the, uh, the lap sound, okay. Recoils, recoils tu maksudnya dia, dia, dia langgar lah, dia langgar wall, uh, dia langgar AV valve ni. So, this, this will cause the lap sound. As for the dub sound, it is the second heart sound created when the blood recoils at the closed semilunar valve, okay? So, it marks the beginning of the ventricular diastole. Ventricular diastole, maksudnya apa? Ventricular relax. Bila relax, uh, di, dalam, dalam masa tu adalah keadaan di mana blood pressure within the ventricle is low, okay? This is to collect uh, blood coming from the atrium. Okay, atrium, atrium masa ni dia akan contract. Okay, atrium akan contract, uh, push the blood into the relaxed ventricle. Okay, so this uh, relaxed ventricle ni, keadaan ni akan menyebabkan uh, semilunar valve here closed. When semilunar valve here is closed, blood uh, in these blood vessels, kan? Uh, blood vessels ni, uh, apa nama blood vessels ni? Pulmonary, uh, pulmonary artery. Okay, so the, the blood pressure within this pulmonary artery is high. So when, when it is high, the blood pressure recoils in this area. Recoils in this area, then they can uh, langgar dinding uh, semilunar valve ni. And also same goes to here, okay, uh, where you have high blood pressure within the aorta. So the blood, uh, the blood uh, will recoil against the, uh, the semilunar valve here. So this will create the dub sound. Okay, so the, the dub sound. So the lap and dub sound is due to the recoil of blood against this valve. Okay, either the uh, closed atrioventricular valve or the closed semilunar valve due to the recoiling of the blood against uh, the valve. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so uh, next is the cardiac cycle. Okay, so for the cardiac cycle, for one complete cardiac cycle, which is um, uh, actually, it is actually one heartbeat, okay? One heartbeat is uh, for uh, for the complete heart cardiac cycle. It takes, tadi berapa saat? 8, 0 0.8 second. So this 0 0.8 second is divided into three phases. <coughs> three phases, which is the first, uh, the, uh, it, uh, the first phase is 0 0.1 second, 0 0.3 second, and 0 0.4 second, okay? So, <coughs> kalau tengok uh, proses ni, okay, kita start dulu dengan atria systole. Atria systole is when at, uh, uh, the, uh, both atrium contract. Okay, both atrium contract. If you look at, in this diagram, so dekat sini. Okay, both atrium contract. So, the remaining blood in the atrium is pushed into the ventricle. Okay, it is pushed into this ventricle. Okay, so uh, at this point, both AV valve obviously will be open. Okay, uh, atrium 
contract, every valve opens and pushes the blood from atrium into ventricles. Okay. At this point, uh, the semilunar valve is closed. Semilunar valve dekat mana? Dekat uh, antara apa, aorta dan juga pulmonary uh, artery here. So, the semilunar valve will be closed. Okay. So, this is uh, to allow as much blood to enter into the ventricle. Okay. As much blood to be collected into the ventricle. So, Next, uh, this, this is this occurs at uh, 0 0.1 second. So next is ventricular systole begins. Okay, so ventricular systole is when the ventricle starts to contract. Okay, ventricle contracts here. Okay, so bila dia dah collect as much as blood uh, in the uh, chamber of the ventricle of both ventricles, pressure in the ventricle increases. Sebab apa tadi? AV, uh, semilunar valve dia close tadi kan? Uh, so pressure within uh, within uh, the within both ventricle will uh, will increase. Okay, pressure within within both ventricle increases. So atrioventricular closed. Kat sini, AV valve, AV valve will, will close. The loud sound is produced. Ah, uh, ini yang tadi lah yang saya cakap. The recoiling of high blood pressure within the ventricle that hits the AV valve. So this produces the <coughs> the loud sound. Okay, so rising uh, rising pressure period. So pressure uh, in the ventricle is higher than in the arteries. Semilunar valve open. So ventricle they can contract. Okay, uh, causes high blood pressure to enter into the aorta and also pulmonary uh, arteries. Okay, so therefore the AV valve will open. So blood is pumped into the aorta and pulmonary. Uh, artery. So nampak dia akan contract. So the blood, uh, blood will enter into the uh, aorta and also the pulmonary arteries. So this creates the second sound which is the dub sound. Okay, due to the high blood pressure within artery, uh, pulmonary artery and also the aorta. Okay. Okay, so next is the uh, the next phase here. Again, so all together. So it will, that, that takes about um, apa, uh, within the, the third phase of the 0 0.4 second though. Okay. So the falling pressure period. So blood flows from the vein into the atria. Uh, into the atria. So ini, ini daripada vena cava lah. And inferior and also superior vena cava. Apa terbalik ni? Ni ke bawah yang bawah. Nombor empat. Sorry. Nombor empat. So the ventricular diastole begins. Okay. Uh, ventricle relax lah. Uh, pressure within the ventricle is lower than the arteries. Ventricle relax. Okay, relax is so that um, uh, the uh, it can collect back the the the, the blood into the uh, the ventricle. So the semilunar valve or uh, close abruptly. Uh, dub sound is produced. This one here. Okay, so this is this produce the dub sound due to the high pressure within the aorta and also the pulmonary uh, um, arteries. Okay, so poly. Falling pressure period, so blood uh, blood flows from the vein into the atria. Uh, blood uh, then and uh, then flows into the ventricle. Okay. So ini adalah uh, keadaan yang mana both atria will relax. Okay, both atria relax to collect blood back uh, from the uh, blood returning in uh, returning from the superior and also uh, inferior vena cava. Okay. So ini dalam keadaan both atria relax. Okay, both atria. Relax. Falling pressure period. So altogether the five phases here are, uh, comp comprises the cardiac cycle that took about uh, 0 0.8 second altogether. Okay. So uh, next is the conduction system of the heart. Boleh lagi ke? You all uh, can uh, apa? Uh, boleh boleh bertahan lagi ke? Ke nak? Uh, kita stop dulu. Kadang-kadang saya kau faham? Faham itu. Faham, okey.
Okay, so before, uh, ada lagi masa, so now we are going to look at the conduction system of the heart. Okay, conduction system, tadi saya dah mention kan, so kalau heart itself is capable of producing its own impulse. Okay, so it is myogenic. Alright, so it is a network of specialized autorhythmic cardiac muscle cells that ensures regular and rhythmic heartbeat. Okay, so the mass of, uh, of specialized cardiac cells are called pacemaker. Okay, so pacemaker is where it is a specialized tissue that is where uh, uh, the, uh, the initial impulse will be generated to cause the uh, atrium to, to contract. Okay, so this initiates each heartbeat, the pacemaker uh, that will initiate uh, heartbeat okay, by producing electrical impulses which is action potential. So pacemaker ni, uh, kita nak, nama lain dia adalah uh, SA node, sinoatrial node. Okay, so the sinoatrial node or S SA node is actually a pacemaker that initiate uh, each heartbeat. So where is the location of this SA node? It is located in the posterior wall of the right atrium. Okay, so near the opening of the superior vena cava. If you look at this uh, diagram of uh, of the heart, <coughs> uh, dia terletak dekat somewhere here. Okay, kalau ada tak gambar dia yang lebih jelas, ah sini. <coughs> SA node. Okay, so this is the location of the SA node. Okay, so this is the pacemaker. So this is where uh, initial action potential is uh, created or initiated or generated. Okay. <coughs> So, um, cardiac muscle, okay, it is uh, composed of uh, intercollected disc, uh, join the uh, the cardiac muscle fibers, uh, contains gap junction. Uh, kita belajarkan pasal hari tu dekat neuron, uh, the way of how impulse is transmitted from one neuron to another neuron. Kita ada gap junction, kita ada uh, synaptic, uh, kita ada gap junction for electrical synapse. Okay, electrical synapse depends on gap junction and kita ada chemical uh, synapse. So chemical synapse depends on the neurotransmitter to be transmitted or uh, to be apa, to allow impulse to be transmitted from one neuron to another neuron. So kalau untuk heart, uh, it depends on gap junction for electrical synapse. Okay, so this is to ensure uh, the impulse is always transmitted from uh, within this uh, cardiac muscle. Okay, the, it does not, de the generation of impulse and the transmission of impulse within cardiac muscle does not uh, depend on neurotransmitter. It depends on the flow of ions through the gap junction. Okay, so allows electrical impulses to move easily from one cardiac muscle cell to, a, to the next. Okay, Sep uh, spread rapidly within the heart tissue. So, uh, pergerakan ion tu boleh berlaku dengan cepat antara cardiac muscle cell to another cardiac muscle cell uh, in the transmission of electrical impulse, impulse along the cardiac uh, muscle. Okay. So conduction system of the heart, uh, after the AV node, uh, sorry, after the SA node, we have the AV node. Okay. So the AV node is here. Okay. That's in So this is the AV node. Initially, as you can see, okay. So initial uh, impulse is generated at the SA node. So it travels along the wall of the atrium and causes the atrium to contract. Okay, so after the impulse reach, uh, travels along the wall of the atrium, it reaches the AV node. So this is where the, the, imp, uh, the impulse will take a break for a moment. Okay, take a break for a moment at AV node before it spreads along the, uh, the AV uh, bundle. Okay, the AV bundle and along the Purkinje fibers along the wall of the ventricle. Okay. So, uh, itu the punya flow dia lah. So, uh, as the impulse uh, spread through the AV bundle at the septum here, uh, it, uh, it then uh, move upward to the to the Purkinje fibers of the wall of the ventricle and causes the ventricle to, to contract. Okay. It, that is the basically the, the conduction system of the heart. So, uh, AV, AV node or atrioventricular nodes, uh, it is located in the right atrium. Okay, sama juga right atrium here. Okay, uh, at the lower part of the septum, uh, receive electrical impulses from the SA node as uh, as it uh, as it 
travels along the wall of the ventricle. Okay, so there is a slight delay of transmission of impulse where uh, he, here is to allow atria to empty completely. Kenapa kena ada a slight delay? So this slight delay is significant uh, to to allow the uh, the atria to completely contract so that all the blood within the atria is pushed into the ventricle. Soalan ni selalu keluar eh, dalam exam. Ha, macam contohnya, what is the significance of the slight delay tu? The significance, uh, uh, the significance of the slight delay at the AV node is to allow the atrium to completely contract so that all the blood within the atrium is pushed into the ventricle. Okay, so uh, the, AV uh, the AV bundle, AV bundle tu along the uh, septum lah, okay. So the AV bundle divides into the left and right AV bundle, okay, uh, branches to each ventricle. So this is the AV bundle, okay. So they can branch into left and right uh, branches, uh, left and right branches, okay. Uh, before uh, uh, before it enters into each ventricle. So, AV bundle branches conduct the impulses to the apex of the heart. Dia akan pergi kepada hujung, hujung jantung ni. Hujung jantung ni kita namakan dia sebagai apex of the heart. So, the impulses has to travel uh, from AV node to uh, AV bundle to bundle branches to the apex of the heart before it enters into uh, Purkinje fibers. Okay, Purkinje fibers uh, is uh, along the wall of the ventricle. Okay, so mesti ke apex dulu, baru dia akan naik ke, kepada ventricle. So, uh, kena faham dia punya flow kat situ. So, Purkinje fibers conduct impulses throughout the ventricular wall. Kalau, kalau awak tengok dekat diagram tadi tu, kan, untuk fahamkan dia kenapa dia nak kena pergi kepada uh, apex of the heart first, kan ini uh, AV, sorry um, Okay, AV kan, AV to the to the AV, uh, AV node, to the AV, AV bundle bundle branches kan, left and right to the, to the apex of the heart kenapa nak kena pergi apex of the heart dulu? sebab dia, dia nak allow the impulse to be spread from the bottom of the heart upward. Well, bottom of the heart upward. Okay, bottom of the heart upward sebab apa? The contraction of the ventricle has to occur from apex upward. Dia akan, dia akan contract ke atas. Dia akan uh, contract ke atas. Sebab apa? So this, the contraction of the ventricle uh, has to start from the apex upward because the, the the aorta and also pulmonary artery ada dekat atas supaya darah tu dikeluarkan uh, keluar ke dalam aorta and also pulmonary artery. Ha, so dia kena, dia kena contract dari bawah ke atas, dari bawah ke atas supaya untuk polak darah dalam ventrika keluar melalui aorta and also pulmonary artery yang berada dekat atas jantung bukan kat bawah. Ha, so the contraction has to contract from apex upward. Okay apex upward. Bundle branches, apex upward. Ha, macam tu. Okay. <coughs> so as you can see from this diagram, can. Mm. So here you have the, you have the uh, right atrium. So this is where the SA node uh, is located. So this is uh, the, it is the pacemaker that initiate uh, a contraction of the heart. Okay. So uh, it initiate, so uh, the impulse spread through uh, the, the, the wall of the atrium and it reaches the AV, AV node. So it, there is a slight delay. This is to make sure, uh, this is to make sure that all the blood within the atrium is pushed into the ventricle. Okay, at a slight delay dekat sini. So once, uh, once the, the, the atrium relaxes, now the impulses will travel along the uh, along the branches uh, of the AV can uh, in the in the septum move towards the apex of the heart and then upwards along the Purkinje fiber of the ventricular wall. So the punya contraction of the ventricle is from apex upward because this is to push the blood in both ventricles uh, out of the uh, here is the uh, aorta. Kan? Dia ada dekat atas jantung and also pulmonary artery from the uh, from the right ventricle. Okay.
that is the significance of uh, of uh, of the ventricle contracting from bottom upward from apex upward okay okay so uh, for 6.4.1 electrocardiogram uh, ECG or EKG uh, kita akan tengok di depan lah Okay Saya rasa dah terlalu banyak information yang saya bagi kat awak untuk hari ni So kita break dulu Okay Ada soalan? Okay 